This short tutorial will cover some of the different methods that we can achieve blending with colored pencil. Layering two or more colors creates an optical or visual blending. A colorless blender is just wax in pencil form, and that can unify your two or three colors or smooth out your pencil strokes. Colorless blenders also come in marker form, and that acts like a solvent. Solvents dissolve the pencil and enhance color. And solvents can be applied with a cotton pad or Q-tips, or you can get these water brushes and put the solvent in the uh, handle. And then we have things like the gray paper stumps and the tortillon. So I've made some swatches here. I've got uh, permanent red, uh, process red, and I have deoxazine purple here. So normally you would color a swatch of your permanent red and you can do them in many layers. Yeah, I'm just quickly doing these now here. And so then the process red I blend over into the permanent and then down into the deoxazine purple. And here's the deoxazine purple. And I'm just blending, putting another layer, and that's how you call you um, you create blending using just the layers. Now for the colorless blender, which is just the wax, no pigment. It sort of unifies everything and smooths things out to a certain degree. And it enhances the colors as well. And you can go back and forth, again layering and filling out to get the, the look that you're, you're going for. Now the marker, the fat end, and there's a thin end, and this also unifies and blends and enhances. Some people like these pens because they're easy to use. Others don't like them because of the smell. You also have to take very good care of your tip making sure that you always clean it on a piece of scrap before you before it dries and before you go into say a yellow or something like that now when that's dry i could go back and i could layer again Now I tend to use the odorless mineral spirits as my solvents. There's lots out there that you can try and test out um, on your own, but this is the one that I use. So I take a little pipette and I buy this in a larger jug and I pull it out and I put it into my, into my water brush. 
take that little black thing off. Some of the brands come with that little black thing. I just take that off and fill them up. There's this kind here that does not have that little black thing in there. It's very easy to fill up. Um, and depending, of course, on the size of your area, you could use the cotton pad or the Q-tips as well. Now, you just squeeze these little things. There's usually a little area right there to squeeze them and And then you go ahead and you can blend with this. You do have to rub a little bit hard or tap depending on what you're trying to do. And then you probably should let that dry and then you can go back and, and add your layers as well. You can use the colorless blender and you can go back and forth. Now for the paper stump and the tortillon, you have to have quite a few layers on before you do these, otherwise it really, really won't work. And you can see, I've got two, I've been doing okay here. The tortillon just has a finer tip and nothing on the other side, so they're very similar. Now you could use this with the colorless blender pencil first, and then you could go ahead and just blend with the stump or the tortillon. And you could do it with the solvent, like after the solvent step. Or even this one. You can see though that I'm press applying a fair bit of pressure, so uh, you have to be careful because what you're doing here too is flattening out the tooth of the paper. You don't want to do this too soon in your process. And you want to keep your, your stumps and your tutorial uh, clean on a sandpaper pad. And even your blender or your water brushes, you do need to make sure that you keep them clean too. They will stain, but at least Get in the habit of wiping them off before you, uh, at, when you ever you finish a step before you start your next step. So most artwork is a combination of techniques. So for instance, when you look in this back area here, I took my canary yellow and I colored in, well into here, faded it off. Then I took the lime green and went into the yellow and up into that area there. And then the final color was the Prussian green and I went this way. Then I applied the OMS, let that dry, and repeated my combinations again and again. At some point when you put the OMS on it lifts up and dissolves too much of your paint and that's when I tend to take the gray paper stump and use that as the blender because by then you have lots and lots of layers, lots of wax, lots of pigment and lots of stuff that you can uh, move around and blend. So you have the three colors of layering, you have the OMS, and you have the gray paper stump. All three techniques are used in that background. Now for this work in progress, I've completed the eyes 
And again, I've used many of the blending techniques that I showed you earlier. I colored the whole iris with that color, lime peel. Then I added a shade of kelp green. Then I applied the OMS, waited for that to dry, repeated these two colors, added another shade, the dark green. Then I used the colorless blender to smooth out and get some texture at the same time in little circle circle strokes in this lighter area. Applied the OMS whenever I needed to, added another shade which was the uh, cool gray 90 and I used the tortillon to help blend the shadows. Now on the fur, I've done the first step here and I've done the cool gray 90, I've done the French gray 50 and I have done the cool gray 20 for the whiter areas. And now, and then I just applied one coat of the OMS to kind of blend it and get it generally in the same spot. Um, you know, just generally looking furry. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to repeat those steps. Adding more hairs and lines into some of these areas. And I've got the warm gray. Now with the white, this will act a little bit like the colorless blender. Sort of smoothing out a few of the strokes. Now this kitty is not a solid gray. I'm looking for um, more of a silver, silver tip look light gray and dark gray. And then I will put the OMS on again. And that will smooth, add some shading. You can see when you put the OMS on that you need to know what um, look you are going for. So on the hair I'm going um, kind of linear, whereas on the eyes I was going around and around and around. And doing a bit more of a tapping. More of a tapping motion. Just make sure you keep the tip clean when you go from one color to another. So I think I'm getting the look that I want, the hair look. And I'll continue to layer my colors. And at some point I will take the tortillon and the gray stumps out and I will uh, use that technique as well. So I hope I gave you a few tips on how to blend with a variety of tools with colored pencil. Thanks very much.